Hi, my name is Kanye Vignaraja. I'm the UN Assistant Secretary General and UNDP's Regional Director for Asia and the Pacific region. I'm here at USIP to discuss the future of development and a crisis response in increasingly turbulent times. This has been a massive shock. I think it's been about a $2 trillion loss already to the Asia-Pacific economies. Now, if I look at that in human development terms, according to UNDP, all our countries have lost human development gains over the last few years, and we've fallen back to 2016. Now, that means getting to those SDGs is going to be near impossible at the current rate. If I just take this as job losses, that alone sees a generation of young people who are probably going to come back into a job market but earning at least 10% less than pre-COVID times. Now, we hadn't even put on all of this the damage, the emotional loss and distress to these societies. You add to that, along comes the Ukraine war, and I hadn't even realized how much the dependency on wheat and other grains from Ukraine, fuel and uh, food coming from Russia. This means countries like Sri Lanka suddenly saw a food and fuel price hike that took inflation through the roof. Over 70% inflation that we've probably never seen ever in any of these countries and a domino effect that is very alarming across the region. The long-term costs are counted and measured by economic losses, but I would say that that's not the only cost of delayed development. By not being able to respond fast and continuing uh, development investments, if I just take one statistic, some countries, just the interest payments on debt are now higher than public expenditure on health and education. We never thought in our lifetime we'd see this. How are we going to get to those SDGs if the cost on probably two of the biggest uh, human development indicators, health and education, is falling so dramatically? I think there's a bigger cost that we have not seen yet, which is a political and social atrophy that's going on, where people are just not responding to regaining their strength and institutions and services coming back fast enough to really look at how we can respond quicker. So the worry, again, if I look across countries like Afghanistan, uh, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Laos, now Pakistan, you add a climate shock to this, uh, it's not just debt distress, it's an entire political shakeup and an economy that cannot recover fast enough to really get to those SDGs by 2030. So the cost of delaying development investment is huge. Well, the good thing is there's a lot we can do and have been doing, and as UNDP certainly, a lot of the preparation work we've been putting in place, the prevention work, is starting to pay off. So let me take just a few, just the investment in digital transformations. This is allowing services to reach people who never had access, let's say, to healthcare or learning before, but our digital payments, cash payments being made through mobile uh, networks. This is actually reaching huge vulnerable populations uh, who were otherwise uh, left behind. A second, I would bet on solar. You know, the energy security question is so shaky these days. But if we invest in solar, much of Asia and the Pacific, uh, the sun shines almost through the year. And that solarization, including you know, of schools, health clinics, just keeps the lights on. And the cost of this is minimal compared to the cost of current uh, oil and gas prices. And I would say the third big one is most of our countries in the region are run through informal economies, not just the formal economies. So even when the formal economies shut down, like it did in Afghanistan, the informal economy, usually run by women, 
invest in them and the countries just jump start. Uh, the people's economy keeps going. An example, you give $1,000 to a woman-led enterprise in any country, Afghanistan, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, it already immediately the next week, they employ four to five people. Each one feeds a household of about 10. Just think, we don't have to fly in food aid. People will feed themselves, take care of their families, protect their communities if given a chance. So to me, investing in agency, in people's will to get on with it, uh, that's where the answer lies.